Welcome back, everybody, to the Cleveland Guardians franchise here on MLB The Show 22. Today, we'll be wrapping up the regular season here in year number five as we finally find out which team wins the American League Central. We'll find out if we get the number one seed in the AL as well. Currently, there are about three weeks left to go in the regular season. We have a big two-game set to start things off against the Dodgers. Then we play the Royals, the Tigers, the Royals again, and wrap things up on the road with the White Sox and the Giants. Let's take a look at the full MLB standings with three weeks to go. The Yankees have clear control of the American League East. Obviously, us and Minnesota are pretty much neck and neck in the AL Central with us having the slight lead. The Red Hot Astros lead the West with the Mariners only half a game back and the Angels well within the race as well. If we don't end up winning our division, we'll probably get the number one wild card. That's where Minnesota is currently with the Mariners and White Sox tied for the second spot. As for the NL, the Braves, Cubs, and Dodgers lead their respective divisions. The Brewers have the clear number one wild card spot as of now, and it looks like the second spot will come down to either the Miami Marlins or the San Diego Padres. As it stands right now, we are the number one seed in the American League, but not by much. We're a game and a half ahead of Minnesota, and we're two games ahead of the Yankees. If we were to win the division with over a week left to go in the regular season, we'd probably only be competing for the number one seed. I'm not so sure we would want the number one seed because we would probably play against Minnesota. If not them, maybe Detroit or Chicago in the divisional round. I would way rather play against the winner of the American League West. I'm not saying we're planning to throw games, especially if us in Minnesota remain close. But if we do win the division with a lot of time left in the season... It is an idea to not necessarily throw games, but, you know, maybe not necessarily try to win as much and play some of the younger guys. But we have to clinch the division in order to even consider that strategy because we certainly do not want to only play in the wild card game. That would be worst case scenario. So obviously, goal number one is to win the American League Central, and if it takes us the entire month to do so, so be it because Minnesota probably is the second best team in the AL. So while I would not want to face off against particularly them in the first round of the playoffs, we might have to, or else we might not win the division entirely. I wanted to play this first game here against the Dodgers. We had them for two games here at home. I was very compelled by the pitching matchup. We've got Shane Bieber on the mound. They've got former Cleveland Guardian and well-known women respecter Trevor Bauer starting. Both teams have very similar records, and who knows? This could be a World Series preview. The Dodgers are obviously one of the best teams in the National League, and of course, we are one of the best teams in the American League. Here's a look at both lineups, 1-9 to nine for each side. Dustin Harris starting at first base instead of Josh Bell, who's getting the start off. Shane Bieber is on the bump here for Cleveland. It's obviously been a little bit of a disappointing season for him, but he has been playing a lot better since the All-Star break, so hopefully he can keep up against a loaded Los Angeles Dodgers lineup as he faces off here against Mookie Betts. He hits this one into the gap, possibly for extra bases. Sanchez chases after it, but it looks like Mookie's going to find his way on to second for a double. And with one away, the Dodgers have an early runner in scoring position as they look to strike first. With two away, Freddie Freeman rips it into center. That'll go for a base hit. Mookie Betts will look to score. Pretty good throw by Valera, but it's just not in time. So Freddie Freeman drives on a run there on an RBI single. And the Dodgers are on the board first, one nothing. Trevor Bauer is starting for LA. He spent many seasons in Cleveland, most remembered for him launching a ball in Kauffman Field from the pitcher's mound to over the fence in dead center. And as we know, Bauer is not the greatest of people off the field, so it would be fun to rough him up a little bit. That's a good start with one away. Jesus Sanchez singles in to right. So the Guardians had themselves a base runner here in the bottom of the first as they look to respond with a runner of their own. Two away for Jose Ramirez. It's a chopper over to first. Fielded cleanly by the big free agent signing, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who tags the base. And through one, it's the Dodgers on top. One to nothing. Let's go into the top of the second. James Outman is up for L.A. with two away. He goes down on the changeup. Good inning there for Shane Bieber. He retires the side after allowing an early run in the first inning. Bottom two, here's Alvaro Pena. He's been playing great since the All-Star break. He strikes out by check swinging on a knuckle curve for the second out of the inning. So far, so good for Bauer as he gets Ramon Ramiro to go down looking on the low and inside slider. Couple of nice strikeouts from Bauer. Let's move on to the third. Trey Turner, the top of the order. 
up for the Dodgers as he goes down looking on the low and outside fastball. Shane Bieber's really starting to pitch well after a slow start as we go to the bottom of the third. 1-2 for Valera. He goes down to the cutter. Both offenses look pretty much lost right now. Shane Bieber has taken himself into a time machine. He does not look like this season's version of Shane Bieber. And Trevor Bauer is also pitching like a Cy Young. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. goes down on the fastball. Let's go bottom four now. Jesus Sanchez has Cleveland's lone base hit today. And he joins the strikeout parade as he swings and misses at the knuckle curve. If you enjoy an old-fashioned pitcher's duel, this game is for you. Both pitchers looking really good. Jose Ramirez is now up. He draws a walk. So finally, Cleveland gets another base runner. I think that's the first base runner for either team since the first inning. Kyle Lewis then grounds out to first. So Cleveland will do nothing with their runner on base as it is still 1-0 through the fourth. Will either offense wake up and do something? Yorbit Vivas singles into left here in the fifth. So the Dodgers finally get themselves another base runner. We'll see if they can do some damage. With two away, David Dahl grounds it up the middle. Marte flips it to Ramiro. Another good inning for Shane Bieber, who's not showing any signs of slowing down. This looks like peak Cy Young Shane Bieber rather than the aging player who we've seen throughout most of this year. Bottom five, another strikeout. This time it's Dustin Harris. Trevor Bauer has allowed two base runners in five innings. He looks awfully good today. Into the sixth, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. up for the Dodgers. He gets a hit into right. So the Dodgers are starting to get a little bit of offense going these last couple of innings, but still not much. They only have four hits in this game as Freddie Freeman swings and misses at the cutter. Six innings, one earned for Shane Bieber, and he is still not showing many signs of slowing down. Bottom six, another one, two, three inning. This time it's Sanchez who goes down looking. Trevor Bauer has allowed two base runners all night as he struts back to the dugout. Top seven, Yorbit Vivas flies it into left. George Valera makes the play. Another one, two, three inning for Shane Bieber. This game is flying by because nobody is getting on base. Can Cleveland change that here in the bottom half of the seventh? They still only have one hit tonight. That was back all the way in the first inning. Jose Ramirez goes down looking on the fastball. Not to make any excuses for Cleveland's lineup tonight, because they've been really bad, but it does feel like they have a really big strike zone. Kyle Lewis now hits this one high and deep in the left field. Back at the track at the wall. It is caught. Cleveland still only has one base hit today, back in the first inning, and only one base runner since then. Trevor Bauer and Shane Bieber are still balling out. There's no reason for either team to take them out yet, as David Dahl rips it in the left for a hit. So the Dodgers have another base runner here. We'll see if they can look to strengthen this lead and possibly knock Bieber out of the game. Trey Turner swings and misses on the fastball. Nice pitch by Bieber for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up Mookie Betts. Weak dribbler over to Cattell Marte. It's going to be a close play at first, but he got him. Eight innings, one earned run for Shane Bieber. We'll see if Cleveland keeps him out for the ninth inning. His pitch count is not that high. It's only at around 110. Trevor Bauer strikes out Ramon Ramiro on the slider. He's also at around 110 pitches. Here's Eliezer Alfonso. Flies it into left, and that one is caught. Cleveland still does not have a base hit since the first inning. They'll have to score in the ninth inning if they want to win this game, and they have not shown any signs of being able to do that here against Trevor Bauer. Let's move on to the ninth. Shane Bieber remains in the game for the Guardians as he faces off against Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who hits that one high and deep in his center. Sanchez gets it to the warning track. If this center field dimension wasn't so pitcher-friendly, that easily could have been a home run. Freddie Freeman's now up, grounds it to short. Backhanded throw by Marte, he got him. Nice throw by Cattell Marte for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up Brian Anderson, the third baseman, 3-1. He's going to fly it into right. Kyle Lewis is under it, and he will make the play. Nine innings, a complete game for Shane Bieber, only allowing one run. But the problem is his offense has zero runs, and they're going to need to score at least one to keep the game alive. So the Dodgers would take Trevor Bauer out of the game. I skipped the original cutscene because I assumed they would keep him in. Instead, Lloyd Harnett, their closer, who is an ERA of four, is in instead. I don't get this move at all by the Dodgers. Why not let Trevor Bauer finish the game with how good he has been tonight? Well, we're going to see if the Dodgers end up regretting this move. 
Josh Bell entered the game earlier off the bench. He starts with a ground out to third for the first out of the inning. Cleveland still only with one hit and two base runners all day. That'll bring up George Valera, the top of the order, back up, and Valera singles in a right. That's Cleveland's first hit since the bottom of the first inning. They finally have another runner on base, and that'll bring up Jesus Sanchez. We'll see what we can do here, the 2-2 pitch. That's a tough one to lay off. High fastball, close to the middle of the strike zone. But Marte lets it go, and that proves to be a good decision. Following pitch, Marte grounds it to third. The Dodgers can end it, but Anderson misfires to second. Everybody is safe, and this changes everything. That could have been a game-ending double play, but now the Guardians have two runners on. The potential tie-in run is in scoring position. The winning run is on first. Sanchez will be replaced by the speedster Jay Allen, as that brings up Cattell Marte. As the Guardians mascot tries to fire up the crowd by doing his best Trevor Bauer impression, and we'll see if Cattell Marte, clutch Cattell, can look to end it. 2-1, two 2-2 one, two -two count with one away. Marte hits this one well into the gap, and that's going to drop. That could end this game. One run scores. We're now tied. Allen looks to score. The throw to the plate is not in time, and the Cleveland Guardians win it. 2-1 to one with a walk-off double in the bottom of the ninth inning by clutch Cattell Marte. What a game. The Dodgers scored in the top of the first inning. And then after that, nobody scored until the bottom of the ninth. Cleveland had one base hit going into the inning, but they were clutch. Valera gets on base. Brian Anderson has the throwing error. And Cattell Marte capitalizes by finishing it off. Shout out to both of these starting pitchers. Shane Bieber went the entire way. A complete game, nine innings. Trevor Bauer was also fantastic. Eight innings, one hit allowed, one walk allowed, and 12 strikeouts. I would have kept him in. I don't know why they used the reliever. And, well, it ended up costing them the game. I think Bauer would have finished it off had he stayed in. Trevor Bauer knows a thing or two about finishing at the highest level. As for us, our offense was not good. We had... Three hits and one walk and only two runs, but we still won. All because of Shane Bieber, who pitched a complete game, only allowing one run. He was absolutely fantastic. Shane Bieber is back. He has been performing really well since the All-Star break, and I'm very confident in him going into the playoffs. So with that, we're now two and a half games ahead of the Twins. We're going to simulate these next four as we beat the Dodgers 2-1 to one again, while only taking one of two against the Royals. Despite that, we still have a two-game lead over Minnesota, and that's a look at the wild card race currently. The Angels now lead the American League West, and the Yankees are still very close to clinching the East. New York is about three games behind us. We'll simulate this next week, three games against the Tigers, fighting for a playoff spot, and then three against the Kansas City Royals. We would take two of three against Detroit and only one of three against the Royals. So as it stands now, we are 93-63 and 63 with six games to go, all of which are on the road. We have officially clinched the playoffs, so first off, that's exciting. Second of all, we are now three games ahead of Minnesota, who has also clinched the playoff spot. The Mariners are now in first place of the American League West. The Yankees have clinched the East, and we are two games ahead of them. So let's simulate here early portions of this White Sox series as we win the first game, 1-0. Shout out to Dylan Cease. Minnesota also wins, so we don't make up any ground in the division. By the way, the minor league teams are now in their playoffs, so that's cool. All right, let's simulate this next game. We end up losing 5-8 while Minnesota wins. So we are now only ahead of the Twins by two games in the AL Central. As for the third game against the White Sox, we win and Minnesota would lose. So with that, we are three games ahead and the magic number is now one. If we win or Minnesota loses, we officially clinch the American League Central and we've got a three-game series in San Francisco against the Giants who are out of the playoff race while Minnesota goes to Detroit to face off against the Tigers who are still fighting for a wild card spot. The Yankees are pretty much exactly where the Twins are, so if we win today, we also clinch the number one seed in the American League. And as we look at the rest of the AL, the Mariners hold a one-game lead over Houston and the Angels. And currently for the second wild card spot, that belongs to the White Sox with the Blue Jays and Tigers each a game back. In the National League, the Braves have clinched the East, the Cubs are close to clinching the Central, and the Dodgers have clinched the West. The Brewers are probably going to be the number one wild card, and the Marlins currently are in the driver's seat for the second wild card spot ahead of San Diego. 
So let's hop into this matchup here in the Bay Area at Oracle Park against the San Francisco Giants. If Cleveland wins this or any game in this series, they will not only win the American League Central, but clinch the number one seed. I know the number one seed maybe isn't the spot where we want to be. We might have the tougher first round matchup, but I would ra rather be the one seed than have to play in the wild card game. Here's a look at both lineups. Cleveland mixing it up a little bit today, but they've got their regular crew in for the most part. Jaden Hill starting for the Giants. He was on the Rockies a couple years ago when we beat Colorado in the World Series. Hill's been pretty bad this year. Actually, really bad, I should say. The Giants are just looking for young guys to try to figure out their team for next year. So hopefully Cleveland's lineup can hit the ball well off of him today, unlike we saw against the Dodgers. George Valera draws a walk. Cleveland's got themselves an early base runner. That'll bring up Cattell Marte, who had the big walk-off just a few moments ago against the Dodgers. Grounds it up the middle. What a play at shortstop. The Giants are going to turn two. That's Willie Adamas showing off the lever for San Francisco as we go into the bottom of the first and get a look at the left-handed rookie hailing from Jamaica, Ricky Watkins. This is his final opportunity to prove that he belongs on the postseason roster. So this is a big opportunity for Watkins. His first inning goes very smoothly as he gets Cedric Mullins to go down looking on the fastball. Good start for Watkins as we go into the second. Jose Ramirez up for Cleveland. He's going to draw a walk. Jose Ramirez opened the month of September as the favorite to win the AL MVP. Unfortunately, now that's Alex Bregman. Chances are Jose doesn't win the award, but hey, it doesn't hurt to hopefully have a few nice games and try to steal that away. Jesus Sanchez is going to ground into a 3-6-3 double play. Good job, particularly at first, by Francisco Ramirez as the Guardians have already grounded into two double plays here in the first couple of innings. Bottom of the second, lefty on lefty crime. It's Brandon Lau who goes down on the slider for the first stat of the inning. Good job by Watkins. Now facing off against the big free agent signing, Matt Chapman, who lines it to third. Good job by Alvaro Pena to grab that one for the out. So far, no score into the third. Here is Zane Rowley. Hits it nicely into right center. Rowley's going to look to head for second. Really good throw by the center fielder, and Rowley is barely safe. So the Guardians now have a runner in scoring position. We'll see if they can drive him in. Rowley now on third with two away for the top of the order. Alvaro Pena hitting in the leadoff spot today. He hits it well into right, but it is caught, and the Giants get through the third. So far, Cleveland's lineup has not done a whole lot here against the struggling Jaden Hill. Let's go into the bottom of the third now. Franklin Labor is up for San Francisco, a player we almost traded for a couple years ago. He singles into left field, so the Giants had themselves a base runner here with one away. That'll bring up the former guardian, Manuel Margot. He was on our World Series team in Season 3 as he flies out to right. So after Season 3, Margot signed with the Blue Jays. He played very well against us last year in the playoffs, and he was traded in the offseason to the Giants, where he's been this year. Nice play at first by Francisco Ramirez to get the out. Both teams are playing some great defense today. That'll bring up Jose Ramirez, who hits a moonshot into right center field. That baby is gone. Solo home run for Jose Ramirez, and the Guardians are on the board as they lead one to nothing. Jose Ramirez with his team leading 36th home run of the year, 435 feet, a no doubter off the bat for J Ram, who looks to make one final push towards winning his second consecutive American League MVP. Unfortunately, that one did not go into McCovey Cove. It was not a splash shot, but. Look at that one-handed catch by the fan. Holy smokes. I heard the San Francisco 49ers might be looking for another receiver. Into the bottom of the fourth now. The Giants are going to answer right back with a solo shot of their own. Cedric Mullins at the homer for San Fran. And we are tied at one. That's his 35th home run of the year. Great swing from Mullins to put the San Francisco Giants back into the ballgame. That'll bring up Brandon Lau as it deflects off of Watkins. Marte misplays it, and that'll be an e a single for Lau. Ricky Watkins a little bit shaken up. He will be more than good to stay in the game as he gets Francisco Ramirez to go down looking at the high slider for the second out of the inning. Into the top of the fifth now, same score at one. Ramon Ramiro leads off the inning for Cleveland. He goes down looking on the low slider. Nice pitch by Jaden Hill. 
Let's go to Luis Campusano now. A couple batters later. Hits that one well, but Ramirez makes another nice play at first. Francisco Ramirez has been great defensively in this game as we are still tied at one going into the bottom of the fifth. Franklin Labor is up for San Francisco, and he's going to single into center field. The Giants' offense is starting to play a lot better after a slow start. They're getting some base runners. They hit for some power, at least with the homer in the last inning. The catcher, Diego Cartaya, will go down looking on the fastball, a former top prospect in the Dodgers organization. And then Manny Margot strikes out as well. That'll wrap up the fifth for Watkins as we remain tied at one. Both offenses still really not playing all that well, just like the first game today. Alvaro Pena hits this one well to start off the sixth as Mullins cannot make the play. Pena will waltz into second for a double. And so the Guardians have a runner in scoring position to start the inning. They've got to capitalize and take the lead. That'll bring up George Valera. He reached base with a walk earlier in the game, but other than that, it's been an uneventful day for him as he goes down looking on the outside slider. There have been some really good pitches in both games today that have had these batters fooled. From there, Jaden Hill is taken out of the game. He pitched really well for the Giants today. He'll be replaced by Alex Wood, the lefty, facing off against Cattell Marte, who draws a walk. Marte hits really well against lefties, so the timing of the pitching change was kind of odd, and I don't blame him for not wanting to throw to Cattell. Jose Ramirez homered in his last at bat. This time he strikes out on the fastball. That'll bring up Jesus Sanchez with two on and two out. He draws a walk, and the bases are now loaded. That would bring up Josh Bell, but with his struggles against lefties, the Guardians are going to go to Kyle Lewis off the bench, who did not make the start today. He singles into right. That'll score a run. So a good job there by Kyle Lewis coming off the bench, making a play, and the Guardians take a 2-1 lead with the bases still loaded. That'll bring up Ramon Romero. Hits this one well into right. That one's going to drop for possibly an extra base hit. Two runs will score. Romero is out at second. But still a big inning for the Cleveland Guardians as they drive in a run off of the Kyle Lewis single and drive in two more off the bat of Ramon Romero to take a 4-1 lead. The Guardians decided to remove Ricky Watkins from the game. Five innings, one earned. Good performance. He'll be replaced by the talented line reliever Ryan Weathers facing off against the designated hitter Marco Luciano. He will single into center. We know Luciano on this channel from the Orioles franchise last year where we had him in the organization for quite a while. That'll bring up Cedric Mullins who grounds into a 6-4-3 double play. Good job by the Cleveland infield to turn two and get a pair out. Let's go into the seventh now. Zane Rowley is up. He's hitting very well against left-handed pitching this year as he draws a walk. So the Guardians start the inning with a man aboard. That'll bring up the catcher, Luis Campusano. Grounds this one up the middle. Adamas with another great play. And the Giants turn two. How many double plays has Cleveland grounded into today? It feels like it's been at least like four. Adamas playing great defense as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Camilo Duvall, the former San Francisco Giant, is into the game. Cleveland acquired him via trade in the season one offseason. As Ramirez hits this one high, deep, and gone. It's nearly robbed by George Valera. But Francisco Ramirez gets that one over the fence nonetheless for his 28th home run of the year. And the Giants make it 4-2. to two. Not a great start for Duvall and a homecoming for him as George Valera just missed it. He timed it really well. Willie Adamas goes down looking. Good pitch by Duvall showing he is unfazed after allowing the home run. Then Labor goes down on the fastball. So Duvall allows one, but he gets through the rest of the inning pretty easily. 4-2 to two going into the 8th with Jimmy Nelson into the game for San Francisco. 4.18 ERA on the season for Nelson. We'll see if he can have himself a good inning as Jose Ramirez skies this one high and deep in a dead center field. Mullins at the track at the wall. It is gone! Solo home run for Jose Ramirez, his second at the ball game, 37th of the year, and the Guardians extend the lead, making it 5-2. Jose Ramirez is really knocking on the door of that American League MVP. He wants to win it, just as Cleveland wants to win this division, and they're very close to doing so. Again, Mullins timed his jump really well, but just did not quite have enough on it. Mason Wynn enters the game off the bench. He'll draw a one-out walk. That'll bring up Kyle Lewis, who had a big hit in his last at-bat, driving in a run. This time he draws a walk. Rough inning here for Nelson Aligned, the homer, and now two base runners. Two on, two away for Zane Rowley, who's had a pretty nice day offensively. 
And Rowley draws another walk. So the bases are loaded. Cleveland has drawn a ton of walks all night. Dansby Swanson comes in off the bench with the bases loaded. Two away and a full count. And Swanson strikes out on the knuckle curve. Would have been nice for Cleveland to extend the lead a little bit, but not a bad inning as they score one, but also leave them loaded. James Karinczak enters the game here in the bottom of the eighth. 4.7 ERA this year. He hasn't been great, but hasn't been horrible by any stretch either as he faces off against Diego Cartaya. He goes down on the knuckle curve for the first out of the inning. Good pitch. Manuel Marco goes down also on the knuckle curve. Another nice pitch. And then the following batter is going to ground out to second. What a play by Marte. A 1-2-3 inning for James Karinczak. Finished off by a great defensive grab by Cattell Marte. Let's go into the ninth inning. The Guardians are one inning away from not only clinching the American League Central, but also clinching the number one seed in the AL for a second straight season. Cole Suzler is in for the Giants, 4.44 ERA. As he starts with Alvaro Pena, he draws a walk. Cleveland is nearing the double figures in terms of walks drawn today. Two gone for Jose Ramirez. He draws a walk. I wouldn't want to throw to Jose either after he hit two homers earlier in this game. That'll bring up Mason Wynn, who hits this one well into center, but it is caught by Cedric Mullins. So that'll bring us into the bottom of the ninth. A three-run game. We'll see if Emmanuel Classe can shut the door and clinch the central and the number one seed for the Guardians. Classe is 47 for 50 and save opportunities this year with a 1.57 ERA. He has been utterly fantastic, but he does not start his day off too well. As with one away, Brandon Lau homers into right center. And the Giants are going to make it interesting as it is now 5-3. Lau with his 26th of the year. That'll bring up Francisco Ramirez. He goes down on the slider. And the Guardians are now one out away from winning the division in the number one seed. Chapman grounds it to first. Pena blocks it. Flips it over to Classe. And this game is over. For the third time in the last four years, the Cleveland Guardians have won the American League Central. And they have clinched the number one seed for a second straight season. The one time in the last four years we did not clinch the division was the year we won the World Series, so hopefully we can change that trend this year. The offense didn't hit the ball that well, only seven base hits, but we drew 11 walks. Our discipline was great. Jose Ramirez homered twice. Romero drove in a couple of runs along with Lewis, and the pitching was pretty good. Ricky Watkins was impressive. The bullpen was fine. I wouldn't say they were great. Classe and Duvall both allowed homers. Lau, Mullins, and Ramirez went deep for San Francisco. Jaden Hill gets the loss. I think he pitched pretty well, though. The Giants just struggled with control. So there you go. We got the big letter Z next to our name. We clinched the number one seed. We clinched the division. And for these last two games, we can start some of our younger pitchers while getting some of the younger guys an opportunity in the lineup. Luis Rangifo will be called up, and Ricky Watkins will be sent down. I want Rangifo to get some MLB playing time because he's going to be on the postseason roster. As for Watkins, we already used his minor league option, and he's not going to pitch in the regular season. So it doesn't really hurt us to send him down. We would split the final two games, losing the first one 4 to nothing. I had Marcos Villalobos start. Villalobos was caught up at the beginning of the month and has pitched great. He got the loss, but still pitched pretty well and has likely earned an opportunity on the postseason roster. The second game, we won 9-3. to We started Rambo Rodriguez, another guy fighting for a postseason roster spot, and he also pitched pretty well in this game. Five innings, two earned runs, and then Michael McGreevy, who's also fighting for a roster spot, finished off the last four innings. So we officially finished the season 97-65 and 65 as the number one seed in the American League, and we'll face off against the winner of the wild card game as there's a look at the final standings. The Yankees win the East, we win the Central, the Mariners win the West by three games, the Twins are the number one wild card, they'll play against the White Sox, who beat out Toronto and Detroit by just one game. In the National League, the Braves, Cubs, and Dodgers win their divisions as expected, while the Brewers will play the Marlins in the wild card game. Let's take a look at the stats for the season. Here's a look at the numbers, and the players on the roster currently are the guys I have selected for the postseason roster for the first round. Now, I could still change who's on the roster prior to the first game of the playoffs that we plan, which is going to be in the next episode. So if there are players not on the postseason roster who you guys think we should put on, let me know. We can also change the playoff roster after each round. So say we win in the ALDS, we can always make a few switches before the next upcoming series. In terms of notable bubble players who are on the postseason roster, those guys include the likes of some of our younger players, such as Dustin Harris at first base, 
along with him, Michael McGreevy, Luis Rangifo, Rambo Rodriguez, and Marcos Villalobos. And then as for some of the guys not on it, they include Jay Allen, Daniel Espino, Tommy Madlock, Mason Wynn, Taj Bradley, and Ricky Watkins. But again, we can make changes before the first game, so if you guys have a different suggestion, feel free to let me know. Let's now shift our attention over to the wild card round. Currently in the minor league playoffs, the AA team was eliminated and the AAA team is going to the championship. But right now, I'm a little bit more focused on this wild card game because we play against the winner in the ALDS. I decided to technically user Chicago because I would rather play against them. Bryce had Stott, the shortstop, would lead the game off with a solo home run for Chicago, but Minnesota would end up getting three in the bottom of the first. They would add another in the second, and then three more in the third. Shane McClanahan, the Cy Young candidate, did not pitch much like a Cy Young today. Jose Urquidy, on the other hand, is pitching great for Minnesota, and it looks like my worst fear is going to be coming true. We'll be playing against the Minnesota Twins in the ALDS. This is the exact scenario that I have been talking about since June that I've wanted to avoid because I think the Twins are the second best team in the American League. So we have got a major challenge in front of us in this upcoming divisional round. The Twins did not score after the third, but they didn't really have to because their pitching was really good. And outside of Bryson Stott, nobody on the White Sox offense really showed up. Shane McClanahan also did not show up. So we've got a big time battle here with the Twins in the ALDS. We've been fighting for the division with them all season long. And again, I think they're the second best team in the American League. And I also think playoff matchups against divisional opponents already kind of neutralizes it as is. But the fact of the matter is, I think they're better than the Yankees. I think they're better than Seattle. So the Yankees end up getting lucky while we end up getting the short end of the stick. But that doesn't mean we're going to be making excuses. We're going to try to go out and beat this team. They're led by Jordan Alvarez and Ian Happ on offense. They've got a good group of pitchers. They do have some guys who did not play so well this year, like Syverson, Woods Richardson, and Duran. So I'm curious to see how they align their pitching rotation. They do have a solid bullpen led by Jorge Alcala and Rysel Iglesias. So I think it's going to be a bad Battle. In the National League, the Marlins beat Milwaukee in the wild card game over there. They will play against the number one seeded Cubs while the Braves played the Dodgers. That'll wrap up today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think of the postseason roster. Are there some changes you guys would like to see? In the next episode, we'll kick off the ALDS against the Minnesota Twins with the first two games at home in Cleveland. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.